Good afternoon, collectors. Welcome to Layton's Loft. Thanks for joining us today. See, we have a number of folks already hanging. What's up, Tyler and Charles? Welcome, Chris, Todd, and Dom. What up, Melch, Ken, Nick? Uh, as I just joked with Lou before we hopped on, Lou is already at the National. That's right. I hitchhiked out. I got my Volkswagen van, and I'm just camping out in the parking lot. Now, we know we're not gonna. you're not going to make it this year, Lou. But you think there's a chance you're going to make it to next year's national, seeing as how you could drive there? Atlantic City? Yes. Oh, yeah. What's up, William? How are you? I would have been there if it had been Atlantic City this year, yeah. Great. Got a feeling uh, people are going to be lining up for uh, the limited signing that we're going to be uh, offering. We're going to tell people there's 25 uh, slots available, Lou. Okay. They can do a meet and greet and, uh, you know. With me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're going to see. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how those are going to sell, but okay, we'll go with Hey, it. listen, I'm in for one. All right, excellent. Um, I think the gang will be in for one. What's up, Sean? Um, so just about, I can't believe it, I'm looking at the schedule, and it freaked out last night. I woke up 6 this morning, no alarm. Um, you know, the, the Nationals upon us, right? We're about, now everyone who's going to the Nationals is going to be arriving you know, on different days. What's up, Lucas? I, myself, and most of the team will be arriving on Monday. So if you look at the you know the the clock and the calendar, uh, today is Wednesday. Um, Sam will be ten days from today. Uh, he'll be in Chicago, and then J Five, myself, and several others arrive Monday morning to early afternoon. Uh, and then uh, you know the national is open on Monday and Tuesday to the dealers for the case break pavilion, and then the regular floor Wednesday to the public. Uh, and then you know I know some folks. Who are just attending are coming in Tuesday, so that way they can kind of hang out at night and then be ready for, you know, first thing Wednesday when they're allowed in the show. Yeah, uh, everyone's getting excited. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Um, and for those of you who can't make it, uh, it will be in Atlantic City next year, of course, uh, all being well. Uh, so for those of you East Coasters that uh, enjoy driving and don't like to get on the plane, uh, it'll be easier for you just to hop uh, right on down to AC. No, Jeff, I wouldn't take my dog. He'd be too maniacal. He'd be out of his mind. Yeah, I think a lot of dogs probably wouldn't do that well at the National. <laughs> He'd buy everything, too. Yeah, yeah. He wouldn't offer you a choice. He would just start, <laughs> you know, investigating. That's what Argy Boy used to do. Yep. What's up, uh, Tom? Jim, hope all is well. So speaking of uh, Jim, um, Jim, I did receive the cards uh, for our trade. And so in just a few minutes, we're going to show those off. Um, I wanted to start off with uh, the cards that I got uh, in trade from Jim, uh, and then also the Otani Gold that I got from Charles. So, Lou, I'm going to switch screens here for just a minute. We're going to show sure. off a couple cards. Gotcha. Okay. Oops. Got this one. Did I get the right one? Yep, you did. No, I get the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> So don't forget, folks, at the end of the show today, we'll be giving away this 1962 Tops Roberto Clemente SGC4, courtesy of Layton's Loft, Vintage Breaks, Just Collect, and special shout-out to my friend Bill Zeltner. We did a little deal. This was one of the cards in the deal. So it's kind of fun to give away a Hall of Famer from that little group that we got and share the wealth with the community. Yeah, I myself, Mark, we're uh, looking forward to it. Don't forget, folks, if you haven't already, uh, comment on our Facebook thread in our ISO trade group uh, for Vintage Breaks or drop Chris Gilmore or Sam an email or a message in regards to if you want to make our event on Friday, we do need to give the Hyatt a head count. All right. Hi to everybody. Thanks, everybody, for saying hi. Oh, excellent. I'm glad Jim got his card as well. Very cool. The trade we pulled off last week on the show. Yeah. So these are the four cards that we got in from Jim. Now, I think someone mentioned they were interested in this Reese. Let me take it out of the holder here. I have to say uh, it looks better even in person. So it's going to take a deal to pry this out of my hands. <laughs> oh, you liked it better when you saw it, huh? Yeah, just, you know, it's got a great look. Uh, you know, of course, you got a white bordered card against a black background, so that kind of makes it pop. And it just happens to be one of the most iconic uh, images yeah. uh, ever put on a baseball card. Especially not named Mickey Mantle, which is kind of cool. I see 
they took my advice. They now have Mickey with them at all times. I see the 52 back here. I see the 51 in our big hit random on the site. It's cool. Uh, so that's the first card, Jim. Thought that was great. It's funny because the history of cards is they get the player for like 20 seconds and take the photo. But that one they had to set up. They had to work. They probably took a couple shots. Yes, yeah. uh, I totally agree with you. They, they, they put some, you know, they put some effort into it. Absolutely. Yeah, through the seven and the eighties, they just stood in there for a second, took a shot or two, and said, "Yeah, all right, thanks." Daniel, I haven't looked under my light or my lamp or anything. I just kind of did so at first glance, but at first glance, it looked great. Uh, and so here oh, Nicholas is asked, "Who's sliding on that card?" That's an interesting question. Do we know? I do not know. No? So here is a fifty-six tops Campion and SGC four. That's a really nice example for the grade as well. Hey, what's up, Greg from Colorado? How are you? Oh, Gil Hodges, according to Daniel. Oh, wait. So I think Chris is interested. Sorry, I was uh, missing here. So Chris is interested in the Reese. I'll do a trade for it. Absolutely. we got to get Chris on. you got to work that out with uh, – is J5 or Sam here? Okay, great. So J five, you want to text Chris and see if he wants to hop on? I don't, I don't really know the value of the Reese, but I'm not, uh, Chris Co is interested in the Reese to see if he wants to hop on. It'd be kind of fun to do another trade, Lou. Oh, absolutely. Uh, here is the McGraw. Let me see if I have Chris's email. I might. From the three fifty four sixty series, which is kind of cool. No, nope. uh, Lou, I'm working on getting us a good guest. Uh, he runs like a T two six podcast. Oh, really? And I'm talking to Jules, and she's like, you know, you think people are going to like that? I'm like, no, I think they're going to love it. <laughs> Can't get yeah, like, honey, You got to understand, we're card nerds. Yeah. You know, she's talking to me about some case, and, you know, after I hear it's someone non-famous I don't know, you know, I pretend <laughs> I'm interested, honey. But I, I, if it's not Madonna and Martin Brodeur, it really lost me at hello. He said he has time. Okay. Martin Brodeur. For something to trick. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it was Brodeur or whoever Brodeur was divorcing, but I think it was Brodeur. Okay. Uh, what would you say, John? He was looking for someone to trade or, or something equal value. Okay, great. Um, cool. Well, just keep me posted. I'm not sure what it's worth, but just here. You can go, you can look it up. Check it out. You guys can talk. Tom says, damn right. We'll love a T206 expert. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so speaking of uh, Oregon... We're going to be uh, talking about the new blog post that just went live, Lou. Uh, we're going to show it off just after uh, the Maravich rookie and the Otani. So check this out. This is a gorgeous Maravich. So as Jim mentioned, it's not that he didn't like the Maravich. He just doesn't really dig basketball. Oh, I see. Not, like, you know, doesn't, you know, love it. Just not as avid about basketball as the other sports. Mike asks if the T206 hit random sold out yet. Not sure. Uh, I have to check the site, but um, if it's not on the site, it means it's sold out. I'm not the biggest basketball guy either, but Pistol Pete. I mean, come on. All right, Lou. Here she is, the Shohei Otani 2018 <laughs> Tops Chrome Update Gold Refractor, number 11 of 50, PSA 10 rookie debut. With some folks are digging the batting pose a little bit more than the pitching pose of him. <laughs> Regardless, still pretty cool. I don't personally own that many numbered card in my collection. Totally agree with you, Kev. <laughs> I know Anson is. Yeah, he would be a good guest. Show he had a week, didn't he? Oh, man. I literally found myself this morning at home, and I understand that you may not be from, uh, you know, down here, but there's a jingle of, um, what is it? Uh, it's O'Reilly Auto Parts. Have you ever heard that? Oh, sure. Yeah. The O O. So I was singing to myself, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 ta. it's very bad. Nice. Um, I like it. But I'm going to come up with a little jingle and do something on TikTok. We'll see if we can get some momentum. That could work. I think so. So anyway, Charles, I really appreciate the uh, the deal that we made. Now, remember, that with Jim, it was a trade. Uh, but with Charles, it was straight cash. Mm -hmm. And he's using that cash to hopefully fund, whether it be an Ernie Banks rookie in a PSA 7 or higher, um, or some other cool stuff at the National. Charles already misses that card. Uh, it's not for sale. Sorry. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I did a deal with Chris Coe one time where I bought several cards. And I think, uh, Chris Coe, if you're still watching, let me know. But correct me if I'm wrong. So in the deal, I bought a really nice Reggie rookie. It was like a five and a half, but it was really well-centered. Yep. Um, 
And uh, what's up, Joe? Um, I really didn't want to sell it. And if I used it, it was going to be for, you know, something cool for vintage breaks. And he was upgrading. And he said, you know, I really can't find a centered one. And, you know, I said, to him, hey, you know, if you really want the card back, I'm like, you know, I'll just charge you 50% more. It's not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> needless to say, I offered it to him at the same price that he charged me for it. And uh, he took it back because That's what he found was yeah. uh, what he found was that um, going into the marketplace, even though he could find a higher grade Reggie rookie, he wasn't yep. able to find one with good eye appeal. So <laughs> anyway, thanks again, Charles. Really appreciate it. Um, You've got that O'Reilly's jingle in everybody's head right oh, now. Oh, are you kidding me? I've been singing it all day. It's just, it's got Otani now. Um, this just went live on the site. 1958 Tops football solo pack. We're starting to roll out uh, some of the goodies we've been saving for the national. Uh, as you saw the other day, we just um, launched the big 250 card graded hit random featuring these two guys. A 1952 mm. Tops Mickey Mantle PSA 1. That's from the uh, Pickles collection from Canada. And then a 1951 Bowman Mickey Mantle PSA four and a half rookie. We're going to talk more about that in the next week or so. Um, before we uh, go any further, Lou, I want to pull up, if you can, our blog. Do okay. I have to switch, switch screens? No. Uh, yeah, you can switch screens. Great. So if you could pull up blog.justcollect.com and the most recent one about the Oregon Trail collection. Yeah. Give me a second to get the blog up here. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Let's add this one instead. Okay, there we go. That's the front of the blog. We'll go into that particular item on the blog. There we are. Yeah, I love the photo, man. How great is that top? Uh, oh, the top here? They yeah. put together the Oregon Trail <laughs> the Oregon Trail uh, with the Just Collect logo and some highlights of the collection. That's right. We got to correct. It can't be Oregon anymore. It's Oregon. I know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I try very hard. My wife's been asking me, like, why do I say Oregon specifically 17 times a day? Um, you know, like asking, like, is there other big finds out there? I say I have no idea, but I really... I'm trying very hard to, to practice. Uh, All right. So this was the story. We heard the story last week of uh, of Andy and his his friend said, hey, I got some cards. Come take some look. And it turned come take a look. And it turned into uh, turned out to be a pretty significant collection. Yeah, uh, very much so. Um, and so you could read all the details, uh, folks, on our blog at blog.justcollect.com. And not just about this collection, but we have hundreds of posts. Uh, hundreds of stories about different collections we bought over the years, as far back as 10, 12 years ago, I believe. Uh, Monty's been uh, so great at migrating uh, over all of our older blogs uh, from our previous blog, uh, so that way we can have everything in a nice new shiny blog that we manage with HubSpot. I feel like I should get paid for that, HubSpot. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Look at this. God, there's so much stuff here. Yeah, you know, it's pretty wild. The team does a really great job of, of you know, photographing it and documenting it for, uh, you know, for the web. Oh, is Mark McGuire there? My guy. That 54 tops Ted Williams that you see, Lou, just got graded SGC4, and it's in that big hit random with the Mickey Mantle 52 tops and the 51 uh, Bowman Mantle. Wow. Full story here. Nice telling of the story, which is a fascinating one, one you will want to uh, dive into. Thanks again, Ken, for uh, the logo for the for the blog, or I don't know if the logo, but the the photograph you put together. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks great. Little nostalgia even in the image. Oh, very much so. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it was great. So thanks. Um, it's really nice appreciate uh, working with Andy on that. Uh, super great to get that in. So five o'clock today. If folks don't know, uh, we'll give you a heads up. In about ten or fifteen minutes, we're going to have Ray Schulte, the PR director for the National Sports Collectors Convention, joining us. Uh, to talk about the show, answer a couple questions from the community, Lou, um, you know, about the show. Uh, and um, also, if I'm hoping he'll share maybe a behind-the-scenes story about Donnie Baseball. <laughs> he should have some. I think so. <laughs> Got J5 if you're looking for him. Yes, we're looking for J5 because we want to talk about uh, these two cards that we just purchased. All right, there he is. Hey, there I am. That's great. You know, it's funny because I thought you were going to be standing over my shoulder, which he so often does in the office. Um, no, we're using the technology today. No, I think I think it's great, Lou. Uh, <laughs> you know, this is a really interesting uh, 
we'll call it the dynamic duo, seeing as how we just had the Lone Wolf collection, Ken. Um, you know, this is a collection where there's only two cards total. Uh, but instead of me spoiling the story, uh, J5 did all the hard work and the heavy lifting. Um, so J5, take it away. Tell us about the cards and then let me know when we should show them off. Sure. So it, I, I'm going to get the testimonial for him in an email form, but I'll kind of tell you guys the cliff notes. So the man, the gentleman right now lives in Pennsylvania. When he was younger, um, he was in North Carolina. And he, st he stopped by an antique store. And he saw this little collection. Uh, I think it, he said it was like maybe between 100 to 200 cards, uh, tobacco cards. Now, the only reason he purchased it is because he thought that it looked cool, that the design was cool. That was really what drove him to buy the cards. And at that time, I think he, he was between him and another person. And he offered the person um, a little bit over $100 for the collection. Um, and this was back, I don't remember the exact date, but it was like years ago. Um, you mean like 70s, J5? or I, I think it was like late 80s, 90s. Wow. So the thing was, when he when he bought it, he knew there was Hall of Famers in there. Again, he, he didn't buy it to sell it. He just bought it because he thought it was cool. Now, as the years went by, the value of these cards went up. Well, from what he told me is that majority of the cards he sold put his daughters through college. Oh, my God. So after all the cards were graded by PSA, um, he sold them. He was left with just two. And he had it just for a keepsake to remember the cards he had. And the two that he was left with was Napoleon Lajue and the card that Lane's about to show off. Go ahead, Lee. Right, I'm switching the screens. So this is the first card. Nice. There it is. That's the first card. That's the lingerie. It came in graded. It's a throwing variation. All of Nap's cards from the T206 set are very desirable, but this one in particular has got a really nice look to it, Lou, with the sweater. It does, and the color looks nice. All looks oh, cool. it's, yeah. I mean, look how many colors are in the background, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, maybe five. Yep. That's yeah, kind of cool. I mean, thinking about this card being produced in 1910, they did okay for themselves back then, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So before I show this off, I'll show the back. Really nice back. So, J5, you want me to take it away from here and talk about how we got the card in? Yes. All right. So, Lou, J5's tell me about the story of hundreds of tobacco cards. Yep. And I'm like, well, when's this going to get good? Because all the cards are sold. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, no, no. They have two left. I'm like, two? You know, I'm like, I'm thinking in my own mind, like, it better be a Wagner or a Plank. Right. You know, and of course, it's not going to be a Wagner or a Plank. But, you know, like, that's what you hope for. Um, and so he's like, no, wait, it's, you know, it's not bad. It's, it's a Ty Cobb. I'm like, all right, all right, well, that's that's not bad. You know, like we're interested. So um it's graded PSA already, mm -hmm. and it's actually a pretty good grade, which you can see I'm about to turn it over in a minute. However, the only caveat is when we get it in, it's in the old holder. Um, when I mean the old holder, one of the older holders that PSA graded back maybe in the first five years of, of when they were grading. And so um, you know it's a collectible. <laughs> yes, but you can imagine, Lou, for the yeah. check that we were going to write, yeah. we wanted to make sure that there was no issues. And so we saw a few things with the case um, that we felt, you know, we did, and we disclosed this to the gentleman. We said, you know, listen, we hope you can understand. And obviously, it's a high dollar transaction. Um, you know, we want to buy the card, but we really want to have it reholdered by PSA. Yeah. Would you be comfortable with that? And so, of course, I just hand that to J5, the assignment, and I say, J5, let me know how it goes. <laughs> uh, you know, and I figure if it doesn't go well, maybe I'll have to get on the phone. But, you know, to J5's credit, just like he does um, every time, uh, is very calming and uh, explains to the individual what we're trying to do and said, hey, if you're not comfortable, we get it. We hope you can understand where we're coming from. We can't write a big check uh, until we understand that the card um, is in the newer, you know, secure PSA holder. And that yep. to be fair, that the grade is accurate, right? And so um, somehow we figure out the PSA like will allow us to reholder it without having to second mortgage the home, <laughs> right? And we send it in, 
and we get it back to like G5 in a week. Like, uh, yeah, and they told me, oh, you know, maybe a month, maybe two. I was like, okay, no problem. And then a week and a half later, it comes back. So they reholdered this beauty. Everything was fine, but check this out, man. Oh, man. Unbelievable. Like one of the nicest, if not the nicest ever, Tito 6 Ty Cobb, bad on shoulder, PSA five and a half. The thing is dead nuts centered. Oh, it Lord. actually looks X mint if you see it in person. And if you can't um, uh, see it that great on here, it'll be at the national. Don't you worry. Good it'll Lord. be with me at all times. I might wear it around my neck like Logan Paul. <laughs> there you go. That'll be on your, your lanyard. I think I got a laugh from someone. Someone? All right. Good. <laughs> so to verify. Mm -hmm. um, excellent. Yep. He was uh, very understanding, very calm, collective. He was very cool with the procedure. Um, and again, he said he doesn't need the money. Uh, it was never about that. It's just that it was time to go. Um, and he had a good time. Obviously, it worked out for him and his daughters. Um, and he decided to, uh, you know, go through the process about getting the card uh, re-slapped. Re yeah, he was really, and, you know, I don't want to sound uh, too corny, Lou. But, I mean, really, he was very supportive. You know, and what I mean is if, if like, he said, hey, you know, I don't need the money. A lot of people say that. And, yeah. you know, to be honest, I don't feel like that's the, the case. Like, it may not be true. Yeah. However... We could just tell by his demeanor he wanted to be treated fairly and wanted to deal with the reputable company. And so even though I'm sure he was inconvenienced and would have rather had the check the next day, um, he understood what we were saying uh, and where we were coming from. And, you know, we filled him in the whole way. Like, hey, here's the label to PSA. You know, this is what they said. Are you okay with 30 days to 60 days? Because we wouldn't want you to get upset. Um, you know, even though, of course, there's no guarantees. And meanwhile, they turned it around like seven to 10 days. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, people are asking about the pop report. Do we have a pop report? I do not, but I'm giving out a BAM spot to Todd C. For uh, I think that's fantastic. I might sing this on the way home. Sweet Georgia peaches. <laughs> that's right, baby. Love it. <laughs> Sweet Georgia peaches is right. It's a beautiful card. Really proud to have acquired this, uh, you know, through our company. Um, and you know what's really crazy is if you had to say to me, J Five, when we got these. And we got them in and we had a, you know, and I looked at it and I got, I came back to you like, it's okay. Now I realize you're playing Monday morning quarterback, but like, what do you think the chances were out of 10? Forget about that. The guy wasn't going to agree with to what you wanted to do. Like that. He wasn't going to tear your head off through the phone. Yep. You can be uh, honest, I'm, you know, cause you have a very good poker face in me. So I don't know sometimes. Now you're being asked about old holder versus new holder. Was it an effect on the price? It was, or is it just you wanting to make sure you knew what you were buying? Great question, Melch. Uh, so basically Lou, we were paying very fair for it, i.e. strong. So we were not, i.e. trying to buy it for a cheaper price because it was an old holder. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say that was part of the issue, but it was part of the issue, meaning we weren't going for a deal. We were paying strong for it. Yep. And so in order to do that, um, we needed to make sure that it was a five and a half with today's mm -hmm. standards and to be fair that the holder wasn't messed with in any way. So it was the five and a half in the old holder and it's yes. five and a half in the regrade. Yes, it, it did. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's what the gentleman asked, too. He was like, are you guys trying to recreate it or just reholder it? Like, no, no. We just want to reholder. The this cost is like $17. I don't think they're going to regrade it at $17. Oh, yeah, that's a great question. So they did not physically regrade it. They just put it in a new holder. Yes. Okay. Yep. But if they were, if they had a problem with it, I can guarantee you they would not. I would get a phone call that would be very yeah. upsetting. I would imagine, yeah. Yeah. So, so then, from one to ten, late, I would say I felt like a like a five that okay so you thought so so we had a chance yeah but once I, I you know i i talked i told him exactly what we needed to say and he just came back at me like oh yeah sure that sounds good well i see here's the thing and i love how how modest j5 is give yourself some credit seriously you know we were talking about some advertisement lou that we're doing for the national and i've been yep. very into don draper and the whole Mad Men thing recently getting you know psyched up for the national um you can't just advertise the people. You can't just write them a check. It doesn't right. work like that. You got to connect. So J5, I, I would say, yes, you may have made it seem that easy, but it could be because the entire time from the moment you started chatting with him on the phone that he was comfortable with you and he didn't think that you were trying to get one over on him or buy yeah, it really he, fast. Or... His demeanor was a product of his interactions with J5. 
Yes. And uh, just to swing everything up, I took pictures of the FedEx label. I took a picture of the tracking. I emailed them right away, exactly, like every step of the way. Because even though he was okay with it, he was calm and cool, that is just part of what I do in the process, just to make everyone feel like they're in the knowing. I don't want to keep anybody out of anything. So Beautiful. Great acquisition. And uh, Jason was right. I, I feel the same thing. The color on those cards is incredible. Oh, you can tell what's beautiful about them, and I'll have them both at the National. I, I don't know if they'll be for sale, but I'll have them both at the National. Um, is you can tell J5, him and I both said it, and Lou, you're noticing it as well. Some of the gang is noticing it. These aren't washed out. These are very fresh. They were acquired with a group of cards that were kept out of the light, that were taken care of, that were cared for. Um, man, I wish he had all the other cards. Like, is, I'm very happy to have this card and proud to own both cards at the moment. But man, I can only imagine the eye appeal of some of those other, you know, beauties oh. in there. Yeah. Uh, he also wanted to confirm he never had the Wagner. He never had any of the big ones. At least he didn't break our heart, you know, with that. Okay. <laughs> or J5's doing it so that I can feel okay. Ari's already turned him over, and it's like, no, I never had him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Chris Coe is ready to trade if it's not too late. Sure. So Chris, I think what we're going to do is we're yeah. going to have Ray join us because um, he's scheduled for five. And then if we don't go too late, We'll have Chris hop on today before 5.30, but if not, if Chris is comfortable, I'll hold the card for a week, and then we'll do a trade next week live on air. Okay. Okay, J5, thanks a lot. Whatever you guys think. Thanks, hey, J5. Guys. Great job. All right. Now we've got Ray Schulte here. Hi, Ray. How you doing, Luke? Hi, Leighton. How you hey, doing? Hey, Ray. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Oh, I already noticed some nice uh, funds off in the background. How long have you had the Jackie Robinson frame poster for well, you know, I collect posters. That's that's what I do. I, I love vintage posters. I started collecting them in the early 80s. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it, my uh, mindset was to collect vintage posters, near mint condition, sports related, um, and, uh, and uh, you know, pre-60. So, uh, you know, when I was living in New York, um, I had a two-bedroom apartment on 85th Street. And <laughs> I, I, I got inundated with all these shot skis and premiums and all that. <laughs> and, and I was, I mean, for me, it's all about collecting. You know, I don't care what you collect, uh, teaspoons or huggy bears or whatever. It's collecting. And so for me, I wanted to collect something. And so a friend of mine in PR in New York gave me a, a, um, a lobby card from a movie as a, as a birthday present one year. And uh, he told me the story behind it. He told me how, you know, uh, the movie production houses, you know, they couldn't get their next movie unless they sent back the movie posters. And so I did a lot of, you know, research and I found out, hey, this is really cool. This is something that, uh, you know, that that I would like to do. And then I, I kind of came, all right, well, vintage posters, they, they've got to be U.S. Uh, and I have a lot of stipulations, obviously, but... Um, you know, I, I've got a couple of really cool Yankee Pride and uh, Lou Gehrig Rawhide and 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 some that, uh, you know, uh, again, go back, uh, you know, I've got a lot, uh, you know, early uh, 19, 1903, 1905. Right. And so, but yeah, I mean, so I, I collect them. And, and, and you know what the great thing about them, and especially in New York, was that uh, uh, you can hang them on your walls and, and their artwork and they're, and they're appreciated by everybody, whether you, whether you're a sports fan or not. So uh, I just continue that trend. I love it. At the same time, I think it's going to be a problem, Ray. I'm seeing the way they display and I'm going to ask my wife to watch today's loft and hopefully she's going to enjoy them as much as me because I'm now going to be going after one at the national, uh, you know, not one of yours. I'll probably ask right, for, right. for some of your advice uh, and there'll be some, you know, certainly great ones I'm sure to choose from at the show, but I, I can see it's, it, it looks great on the wall. Um, you know, my wife will put something up, you know, at home and like, it'll just be some random design. And she's like, you know, what do you think? And I, I just say, Hey, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to be honest or would you prefer me just to say, <laughs> uh, you know, what you're looking to hear? And usually it doesn't end up in a good spot for me, Ray. So I'm thinking I'll bring some beauty into the home with one of these posters. And even, you know, worst case is she's going to say it's got to go in your room. Or if I'm lucky, you know, she'll say it can go upstairs in Crosby's room. But uh, we're, we're going to work it into the rotation. Uh, well, I, I, really, I really like them. I strongly suggest you start small. These are lobby cards behind me. 
Okay. Then, it go, then it goes through one sheet and a three sheet. Now, a three sheet takes up a lot of room. I've got four of them here, um, but uh, they're beautiful, but uh, it, it, it takes up a lot of space. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, thanks again for joining us today. I know you've been uh, working hard, getting ready for the big event in just about 10, 11 days from now. Um, so tell us, you know, from the, the you know, from ground zero, if you will, of the national, uh, how excited you guys are that the show is happening. Um, do you have anything that you're concerned about in terms of, you know, because we have a lot of folks who are watching that are actually going to be going, Ray, and I figured I would ask on behalf of the community. I myself am not concerned, but I figure you're the man to ask. Is there anything that we should caution folks about, whether it be bring an extra mask with you or, or you know, whatever the case may be? Um, you know, we're thrilled that you ha that you're on with us, and we'd love to hear it straight from you. Well, you know, um, when we had the uh, the situation we're in, we had to adhere to all the uh, state of Illinois, uh, you know, health officials, government officials, and and so we took a precautionary approach uh, and, and worked with the governor. And so the governor set down a, a five-phase program. And, you know, for us, it was, it was important that we, we make decisions based on no restrictions. We didn't want to come into this with, you know, maybe uh, X amount in terms of capacity or having to wear a mask. And, and, and by the way, you can certainly wear a mask at the show. Uh, it's, it's your prerogative, but it's not mandatory. And so we were fortunate that, uh, you know, the, the timing was such that, you know, the mayor's uh, fifth phase came, I think it was on June 10th. And at that point, we could uh, go ahead and say, all right, we're officially having the event. Uh, we're, we're hoping and praying that uh, obviously our safety is our number one concern. Uh, probably more concerned with the numbers, actually, versus the, you know, the health condition. The, with the numbers that we're, you know, we're, we're anticipating one of the biggest crowds we've ever had. Uh, you know, our, our general mission tickets have quadrupled uh, from a timing standpoint, and we sold out of VIPs. We just couldn't, we couldn't create any more VIPs. We didn't have the content, the product anymore. Um, so it just kind of ran its course. So fortunately for us, you know, and you know this at the National, we have some really pretty wide aisles. And, uh, you know, we're looking that uh, we're going to we're, we're going to be OK. Well, we've hired extra security, you know, just to make sure that uh, everything is uh, fluid and, and flowing smoothly. But um, I've never seen this before. You know, in the, I guess I started with the National in 2010 uh, and I've never witnessed anything in terms of the pent up excitement and uh, the participation uh, that uh, that we have here in Chicago. It's it's just uh, it's mind boggling. And. To say that we're, we're excited is, is an understatement because, you know, obviously, you know, us just, you know, the staff, just like the, the attendees, just like the exhibitors, you know, we had to go through the challenges. We had to go through the frustrations. And, and then we ended up, you know, I couldn't really do anything from a, from a media standpoint until, I mean, because a lot of the media companies were, you know, their people weren't even in the offices a few months ago. So I couldn't even reach out and I couldn't commit to anything. Uh, so basically what we're doing, we're doing like uh, 11 months of work in we're cramming into like a month and a half. Uh, <laughs> so you can, you can imagine, uh, but we've got, we've got great media partners. Um, fortunately, they know us. Uh, they know all about us. It's not it's something where I have to go in and explain who we are, what we're trying to accomplish. They're, they're right there saying, hey, Ray, what can we do? And they're jumping on board. And, and so we're very excited about that. But uh right. Ray, we're getting so much positive response. Everyone's so excited about the national. How was it for vendors, for example? Was there some initial hesitation or was everyone as excited on the vendor side as the public seems to be about going to the show? Well, depending upon when you're talking about, Lou, uh, you know, uh, far back, everybody was a little precautious because of the, the health issues. Nobody, nobody knew what tomorrow was going to bring. And so when you're talking about making long-term plans, uh, you know, flights and, and uh, hotel reservations, it's, it's difficult to commit at that time. Now, fortunately, if you, if you, if you remember, maybe last year, uh, it was a little bit more difficult. You know, the hotels and the airlines weren't as forgiving as they, are, they were this year. So I, I think people have felt a little bit more of a comfort level so they can go out and you know, make a hotel reservation, make an airline 
and either they get them refunded back or you know they can you know, move it on to another time and date. So I think there's a more of a comfort level there. But yeah, everybody is so a little you know uh, inquisitive, uh, inquisitive about you know hey what 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 is going to happen? What what will trans transpire when we get there? But uh, I can tell you that uh, we're very very optimistic and and, and excited that uh, you know from from our conversations and we. And we continue to have the conversations with the with the health and and government officials in Chicago and Rosemont, and we're we're we're, we're you know there's there's nothing that anybody feels that there's uh, you know, something to worry about. We're all we're all moving forward 100. percent That's uh, great to hear, Ray. Um, and just to confirm, next year's convention, as of now, is scheduled for Atlantic City. Yeah, yeah Atlantic City next year, and. Um, you know, it's funny. One, one thing I like to point out, which which a lot of people and, and it relates to the industry. Uh, one of the things, remember, when we when we finished 2019 in Chicago, uh, the industry and especially our show had we we, we had a tremendous amount of momentum. Uh, I thought I thought it was one of the best shows we've ever had uh, going into you know Atlantic City. Unfortunately, in Atlantic City, we had to cancel. Uh, but, uh, you know, with that momentum and with what happened in the industry in terms of the you know the e-commerce and the and everything else that that uh, you know put us in a position where we saw the surge of trading cards and we saw you know, a lot of the international uh, participation. We saw a lot of influencers getting involved. It's kind of like a perfect storm. You know, everything was coming together, and I think now I mean th this is like it's kind of like. It will, it will be the show of shows. There's no question about it. And like I said earlier, I've never experienced um, the excitement that I have, uh, you know, to date. Uh, while we're talking cities, Jason wants to ask if Cleveland will, will ever be back in the mix. Well, you know, that wasn't that wasn't our decision. That was their decision. You know, they they, uh, they closed up the, the the convention center. And matter of fact. Uh, you know, they closed it up in, in such a way that, uh, you know, a lot of the reporters were calling me, asking me what was going on in Cleveland. Uh, <laughs> they didn't even know what happened. And, uh, you know, it's all, it all boiled down to a political decision within the city of Cleveland. And uh, would we like to go back there? Sure. I don't, right now, there's no plans on it. Uh, not until they come back and tell us that, you know, you know in uh, 2023, 24, 25, you know, we're going to get back into business. Uh it's a shame we 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 love Cleveland, but uh, it was again it was a perfect scenario. When when we get and trust me, you know, I mean, we get uh, suggestions, recommendations. Why don't you move it to Florida? Why don't you move to tax Texas and and Washington, um, state of Washington? We just we, you can't pivot the, like that with with the magnitude of a show we have. Cleveland was perfect for that. Cleveland was really good. It, it had it checked off all the boxes we have, and I like Atlantic City. I really do. I mean. When, when, when we talk about Atlantic City, we, the, the staff talks about, you know, the great relationship we have with the convention people, the great relationship we have with the local authorities there. Uh, they bend over backwards. Now, that, that wasn't always the case. You know, years ago, uh, you were lucky, you know, they, they, uh, they basically didn't treat you the same way. But uh, they're, they're a whole different uh, animal right now in terms of uh, how they, how they want to see business come into their city. So uh, we're excited about Atlantic City and, and hope that this will, again, I'm, I'm sure it will. This, this will be a, a huge momentum uh, opportunity uh, going into next season. Yeah, I think that uh, this show, um, I know a lot of people are talking about it could be the best show ever. Uh, it's going to rival, you know, Anaheim, which, you know, as a young lad, I, did not, I was not able to go in 1991, Ray. Um, but uh, I'm going to go on record in saying, you know, barring any fun, unforeseen circumstances, um, we're going to we're going to have the busiest show we've ever seen. I believe it's going to break uh, the attendance records of, um, you know, 1991. And if it doesn't, it's still going to be exciting nonetheless. And I wanted to ask you from your standpoint, um, more so, let's say, not as the, you know, the guru and the, and the, you know, PR person and the marketing director of the national, but more so on a personal side. What are you really looking forward to the most at the national? <laughs> well, that's easy. You know, one of the things I love, and, and Mike Burkus and John Brogy started this years ago. Actually, when I, when I came on, you know, basically the first thing they did was say, listen, 12, 12 years old and under, get in free. Now, I think before me, it was like on Sundays. 
uh, but this was going to be five days uh, throughout the entire show. And Mike and John had that vision. They wanted to bring kids in. And I remember all these conversations we used to have with the manufacturers. Everybody said, we need to get kids involved. We need to get more kids involved. Well, Mike took the initiative. He did it. Um, and it kind of took off from there. And it's kind of created a situation where, you know, today, like in the last, last couple of shows, I can't tell you how many kids you've seen. I mean, it's been unbelievable. Now, last year was even more so in that, you know, not only did they have the dad, the son, but you also saw the daughter, you know, the grandparents, you saw the entire family there. And, the, and the, probably the, the, when you ask me the most exciting thing is when I was walking down an aisle, uh, this is in 2019, and I stopped at a booth and I saw a dad and about a 15 year old kid and they were talking and I, I kind of uh, looked, wanted to go over and listen to what they were saying. The dad was looking at a Mickey Mantle jersey, talking to his son about how, you know, when he grew up, Mickey Mantle was his favorite. You know, he, he, he did this. He, he was such a great guy. I got to visit, him, you know, the stadium and all that. Well, the kid said right back to me, he goes, no, dad, it's Aaron Judge, you know. And, and from there, there was, a, there was that, that interact, that, that, that connection that I just thought was, well, it, it's what it's all about, right? It, it's all about that, you know, the, the, the sharing. And, and so they had something in common, you know, and, and they were sharing it. And so, and then I've seen the mothers and the, and the, and, and the, and the women uh, that are coming back. It's just, to me, that's the most exciting thing for me. I tell people, you know, I, you know, and again, you're in the business of making money and uh, you know, branding and, and uh, everything else. But for me, I just I tell people, hey, even if you're not, uh, you know, going to buy something, you know, come down to the show because it's an experience. Uh, you can walk around without buying anything and and get your money tenfold, you know, money's yeah. worth. So, it, 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 and I know that one of the probably most exciting things for me too is it's it's all about. Everybody says, well, you know, the, our, our price is going to be high. They're going to be low. They're going to be selling. They're not going to sell. Now, to me, that's not what the show is about, really. Uh, uh, you know, it's about <clears throat> connecting. It's about, you know, and, and the difference between this show and, like, say, Anaheim is we have so many different things coming into play here. I mean, from Pokemon to, you know, to, you know grading. I mean, all these things are coming into play that, 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 that can be addressed, can be dealt with, you know, at the show. So I, I, I like that, I, and, and I like the fact that uh, – you know, there's no no place else where you can spend five days, you know, you know talking to, uh, making friends, seeing old friends, um, and just uh, you know, and, and I'm talking about friends just for life. I mean, these you know these people are are are, are great about that. And so we have we have sports fans coming, but and we uh, as well as collectors. And and I think Mike would be extremely happy uh, if he if he was to see what's going on right now. You, I think you, so too. You talked a little bit about security earlier, Ray, and I, the question occurred to me, and it's an impossible question to answer, I guess, but has anyone attempted to imagine how much money is on the floor of the national at a given time? Well, I think that's, that's anybody's guess, um, yeah. you know, uh, but we, we're always um, you know, working with authorities. I know uh, we don't make this public, but uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in contact with the FBI. We're in contact with, local authorities, uh, you know, because we want to, we want to hold true to the integrity of the industry of, of the business. And, you know, you know, now with a lot of people coming in, you know, we want to protect the, the exhibitors and we want to protect the attendees in terms of, um, you know, people who may want to take advantage of, you know, crowds and, and, and situations. So, uh, those are things that we take very seriously. And, uh, you know, we're always, uh, always looking out, you know, I mentioned earlier, security earlier. You know, obviously for crowds and all that, but it goes it goes further on than that. But you know, I, I'd rather not say more than more yeah. than that. So let's uh, switch gears for just a minute, Ray. And um, your son Ryan, how old is he? He's eleven. And is he actively collecting right now? Thanks to a number of people in the hobby, he is. Yeah, uh, he's he's gotten. Uh, you know, he's at that age where. Uh, you know, he's got, he's at that age where it's clicking, you know, he's watching baseball games, he's watching football games and he, he's kind of connecting, you know, the players with the trading cards and, and the activity. 
he's coming out with me. He's going to be my assistant uh, for five days in Chicago. That's and, great. I was gonna I was gonna ask you. So, um, is he around now? Because if he is, we'd love to invite him to open a pack. And if not, he can join us in Chicago when you guys are together, and you can stop by our booth. No, oh, I think you'd love that. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do it in Chicago. That'd be fantastic. That's great. Well, um, you know, I'm uh, really looking forward to the show myself, but I, I would be not doing my job if I didn't ask you something juicy you can share with us. <laughs> you know, funny, uh, or if you want to choose, great. But we'd love to hear a little, you know, nugget about Donnie Baseball. Uh, if you don't know, he was my favorite, you know, baseball player growing up. Uh, I know you guys have worked together for some time. Um, and what he's been able to accomplish both, you know, on and off the field has been tremendous. But I'd love if you could share – you know, maybe something funny like an outtake or you know, something interesting to the community. Well, you know, I've, I've represented Donnie and I still do since uh, 80, 83. And uh, he's, a, he's the type of person uh, that uh, hasn't changed a bit. I mean, he's, he's down home. He's, he's, uh, he's like talking to any, any of your friends. And so, you know, when I started working with him, uh, I got besieged by calls. Everybody, you know, in 84, 85, everybody wanted to, uh, to, to, to get his attention and, you know, have him, have him do events and PR and endorsements and all that. And it got to a point where, I, you know, he said, you know, hey, Ray, you know, the only thing I want to do is I want to focus on the field. And, uh, and, and I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, you know, all these things are great. Uh, he goes, but, you know, uh, the only place I want to see my name is, is in the box score. And, and, and this is, this is when I first started working with him. So it kind of, it clicked right away that, uh, Hey, this is, this guy is serious. Uh, he's focused and, uh, he knows, he, he knows how to, uh, his surroundings and he, and, but at the same time, he's so great about giving back and, he, you know, and, and doing the things that, you know, make you say, Hey, you know, this guy's this guy's pretty cool. That's probably one of the reasons why he's got a, such a great reputation because you know, he's he's just a fantastic guy. Um, but yeah, there there are a lot of lot of you know stories, all positive, all great. And uh, and and today I you know we're we're we're, we're friends you know. Um, but uh, as I tell him, I, you know I you know he's my client first, and that's the most important thing. And. Uh, um, you know, some of the things that, uh, you know, that I think he's got a, even a better future in terms of managing. Yeah, no, I'm super pumped for him and what he's doing. Uh, we'll talk more at the National, uh, but we'd love to get him, you know, on here to join us, even if it's virtually for a pack break in the future. I think that would be super fun. Mm. Um, I did want to show you uh, something that we're super proud of here, uh, Ray. This is a Tito 6 Thai Cobb PSA 5.5 that we just bought and had reholdered by PSA in their new holder. And we were just talking about it shortly before you joined us at 5 o'clock today. Oh, great. So that'll be at the National as well as some other fun stuff at our booth. Well, i tell you what, if, uh, if it's all right with you, um, I've got uh, I got four tickets here if you want to give them away. Uh, these oh, are, wow. These are general mission tickets, uh, good any day for one day. Um, oh, wow. I'll send them out to whoever wins. Thank them. you so much, Ray. We'll give out. We'll give them out to our community actually on today's show, um, uh, or maybe next week's show. Whatever the case may be, we'll have Lou decide. Um, but that's very generous of you, uh, Ray, and the National. And sincerely appreciate uh, you know you joining us. I'm really looking forward to seeing you and your son out there, and uh, the entire National community. Uh, well, I can't wait. I just can't wait. Uh, it's kind of like uh, I just I was hoping it's tomorrow, you know. <laughs> yes, the only be, the only problem would be I wouldn't be fully ready, but I'd still go. I'd buy it's all gonna, my clothes out there. I'd make it happen, Ray. It's going to be exciting. That's going to be great. Well, thanks so much for your hard work and the entire team. Looking forward to seeing you in just a couple weeks. All right, guys. Thank you. Take it easy. All right. Ray Schulte from the National. That was great, Lou. Oh. Love Ray. Ray's a good guy. Add a little cherry on top there. We're going to be able to give away four tickets to the national. Yes. Uh, we'll do that, I guess, maybe next week on the loft so that people, you can, you know, do a social media post about that and thank the national. Yep. Uh, that would be, that would be really great. Absolutely. Uh, awesome. So um, I did want to go over just the seven prizes for today. Uh, and then J5, you think we should bring in Chris now? J5 is giving me the go ahead. All right. So we'll talk about the seven prizes after, but we have action here. We have Hi, Chris, Chris ready. Let me pull the uh, – where's the Reese? 
We'll can you hear it? Clapping. Yeah, we can hear you, Chris. Hey, hey, Chris, how are you? Good. All right, I did some research. All right, good. So tell me, because I got to tell you, man, for 400 J5 hands me a ticket. He says, this is what it sold for 400 I'm like, $400? I don't really want to trade this, you know? 56 banks, gray, PSA 5. That, that's an option. Okay. 56 Teddy Ball. All right. Well, Teddy Ball game is a little bit more my style. Ernie Banks is for Sir say, Charles. Is it? Oh, it's a PSA 4. Another option. Oh, PSA nothing all 6. Nice, Roger nice. 60s. Since everyone loves the 60s. Yeah. If you want, because, uh, you know, I'm a soccer guy. There's oh, Mbappe. you got a little Mbappe. 9-5. And if you really want to go big with the time we have, I like that bat on shoulder. Uh oh, he's gonna put me to a decision. <laughs> Let's see. I haven't even owned it for like twelve minutes. That's the point, so you don't get too attached. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm attached. Oh, wow. Oh, now you're right. making me think. Oh, dear Christmas. But we can focus on the Reese. Yeah, let's focus on the Reese because that just started making me sweat, Chris. Chris um, is not pulling punches here. He's just going no, no. Play. He came down to do business with like three minutes, <laughs> and he's sharp as attack. Yeah, we, we can't do the uh, the copy right now, but I'm absolutely going to talk turkey yeah. on the Reese. I checked up um, on SGC. It's a four, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's been going for anywhere. Where did I? Oh, here's my screen. Um, yeah, it's been pretty consistent around 400, 400, 330, 400. But it's got great eye appeal, so I'm willing to pay more. The, Great, we're willing to charge more. Yeah, yeah um, well, and also it's from Ector, so I'll give it Ector. Yeah. Well, but like you know, like Teddy Balls, three hundred roughly. You can check those up. Um, the Gray Banks is kind of roughly around two hundred, and then the I think the Maris I just looked that up is anywhere from one hundred twenty-five to one hundred sixty, depending on the eye appeal. So All right. you have to do combination of multiples or cash to make the difference yeah, or uh, wait let me ask you about that would yeah, yeah. would you prefer in these situations to do a one-on-one -on -one swap or would you prefer a multiples for one i mean i would say in terms of for cards i always like to trade up if you can i've been doing a bunch of trading down meaning i take a card that's really good and i get two or three back um there's nothing wrong with either one i would say chris tell me what you think i think most people if all else is equal they prefer to trade a bunch of little things to get a bigger thing. Um, yeah. But I think that one of the fun things for me, Lou, as you know, being an owner of Vintage Breaks and just collecting and also really caring about giving back to the community. Like, hey, if I love a card, I won't be shy about saying I don't want to keep I don't want to sell it. I don't want to trade it. But um, I'm also pretty easygoing. So if I don't want to keep the card, yeah, if I get if I have to trade down to like help someone out or, you know, like I did with that 33 Gaudi yellow roof, like I wouldn't normally do, have done that. But I could tell that Paul really wanted it. And I didn't want to, you know, make it really difficult for him and say, hey, I'm only going to do it if you have a $10,000 card. Um, and so anyway. Plus, uh, you, have a different, you have a different set of circumstances because you're in the card flow. I mean, if when you trade this one out, one's going to come along in a week, a month, whenever it is. Some people are looking at that in their collection. They may never see another one and never be in a position to put another one in their collection. That's exactly it, Lou. And so I feel I, I really am very fortunate and grateful for that. Um, and as much as like, for example, and Chris knows me well enough, Chris, like I definitely love this card and I think it's great eye appeal, but I know enough, like I'll come across another one. And so what I was going to suggest is I love the fact that you wanted to get it for your collection. Um, Jim's a great guy and a wonderful supporter of our community. So I think what you were saying is if I got the numbers right, can you show me the 56 Teddy ball game again? Great. So Chris, why don't we do this? If you're willing to do the Teddy Ball game and the Maris, what I'd like to do is the Teddy Ball game and the Maris for the Reese. If I owe you anything, I'll give you a break credit. But what I'd like to do is keep the Teddy Ball game for me, and I'm going to give away the Roger Maris next week on the loft. Okay, how about this? So the difference is roughly $30. How okay. about we give the $30 away as break credit to the community? Let's do that. I like that. We'll give it away on today's show following the loft. <laughs> um, when Sam or J5 takes over, uh, we're going to give away the $30 difference as a break credit, courtesy of the Chris Co. and Leighton Trade. Teddy Ball Game is coming to my collection. Roger Maris is going to be coming to a collection maybe near you uh, next week on the loft. Wow. And Chris, you're going to get a really nice card. 
Yeah, it's got great eye appeal. Great oh, example. Oh, it does. I already awesome miss it. I already miss it. I'm not even going to take it off the desk when I leave uh, <laughs> the end of the loft because I'm, I'm going to get upset and tra- uh, text you and say, I don't want to do the deal anymore. So I'll just keep it on the desk. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so what do you think of the Cobb while we have 30 seconds? What do you think of this crazy story? Whoa. Oh, I think it's fantastic. Like, you know, I'm a huge proponent, like scarcity. There's only, I think I posted up in the chat. There's like seven total in a five or, I mean, or in a, yeah, five. And then with the qualification, there's only one 5.5, which is probably that one. Yeah. It's probably this one. Um, it's, you know, it's a Piedmont. I don't know if it's a Piedmont 150 or 350 because there's, that makes a difference. on. It's scarcity. a Piedmont 350. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that one might be more scarce, but I mean, you can't really, it's hard to put a price. You can't really look at comps at it and, and that's the thing. And so, you know, for me, like, you know, I have a PSA four of this. I have a red PSA three that has a slight wrinkle, but it's a Tolstoy back. Those are really uh, hard to find. So yeah, like, I mean, yeah, that's a great question. I'd almost rather have a rare back, lesser grade, maybe even less eye pill, but because it's scarce, I'd rather have that than say a PSA four that's with a sweet it's still a great card, but cap, which is more common. Sure. sure. So that's just me. It's my card. Yeah, I definitely have a bunch of, you know, tougher and scarce back T206 is my collection. And I would say I oscillate. But what happens is, Chris, for a while now, I've generally stopped buying T206s for my collection from like the public. I'll Because I'm fortunate, you know, at, at, in the position I'm in for just collect, I try to take the cards from the, for T206s I like from the fresh batches we get. And I keep those. So I'll be looking at this Cobb tonight, that's for sure, giving it a good look over. Um, you know, we're just excited to have it. And uh, I'm glad that we could do another deal today, Chris. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, See Chris. You, Chris. See ya. Yeah, this is so much fun. We're just trading cards left and right. Yeah, it's it's. this is just really a primer for the national. That's really what this is. Is what's the, If you, you're going to do a pie chart of trade versus cash, how much trading goes on at the national? So I, I, I got to be honest. I think two years ago, I would have said almost none. Like, I'm sure there was. I think it's going to be very prevalent this year. And the reason is because it's social, right? Yeah. So if you come up and you want to buy my Pee Wee Reese for 400, maybe you say hi, maybe you don't. Maybe you see, you've seen my eyes pop out of my head on YouTube. Maybe you don't. You just laugh and you know it's the guy that is, his eyes pop out on YouTube. You, you know, I, I get it. Um, but like at the end of the day, not everyone, eight out of 10 people, they're not going to necessarily talk to you after they buy that card, right? Here's your 400, right? And I'm on my way to, to, to keep looking. But if you do a trade, you have to connect. It's impossible not to. Uh, so yep. special shout out to my friend Mark, um, who's going to be joining me at the National for a little bit, the Just Collect booth, hanging out. Uh, once again, speaking of trading, he's like, you know, wait, I don't even care if I sell anything. But, you know, I'm open to trading. Yeah. Like, absolutely. I, I want to, you know, go there and, and do good business and have fun. But if you told me that the biggest transaction I did all week was a monster trade, you know, six figure trade or something crazy. Wow. Like, I think that would be great. So before I forget, cause I see like the team's huddling over, they're like, get out of here. Um, <laughs> so um, I have no, you know, exact anything other than what's about to come out streaming consciousness. Here's the deal. If you're not going to the national, this may be interesting to you. If you're going to the national, this may be interesting to you. I myself uh, for just collect and vintage breaks, I'm looking to hire someone for the week out there who's interested in video and already knows about video and has equipment. And as much as you may be learning about it and have a love of it, at the end of the day, I need someone who can actually handle it, document what we're doing, um, have some fun while we're doing it. Uh, And of course, uh, there would be, you know, pay involved and all that kind of good stuff. But I didn't know if, um, you know, this late in the game, if there was going to be, whether it be an individual or individuals out there who are interested. So Lou, if you don't mind, could you put my email please in the chat? Um, uh, guys, if you could help out Lou, that'd be great. Contact me directly, Leighton at justcollect.com. So once again, this is for a video gig at the national. Effectively, you're going to eat, breathe, and you know what, all day and night, the national, you're going to be hanging out but you're going to be working. We're going to hopefully, uh, you know, set you up uh, and give you some access to maybe um, things that you wouldn't have normally had access to, meaning some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, we're hoping to have, whether it be Gary and some other player uh, breaks that we're going to do as well. Yeah. Um, so all that stuff is um, things that we want to document at the national. And what happened was upon looking at the staff that's going, if someone's going to do that on our team, that's already going, 
it's going to hurt our ability to do the job that we want to do um, out there. And so if someone's interested, drop me a line. Um, apparently, Andy Brontano would be interested, but the only thing he has is a camcorder from 95. <laughs> and I think he was trying to copy The Weekend at Bernie's or come out with the trilogy because they have a one and two, right? But they didn't come out with the third one. He's going to do He's it the on reason VHS? they didn't because he had a bad camcorder. He's going to do it on VHS, Toy. Absolutely. Speaking of VHS, like VHS is now being collected. I saw some company advertise on Facebook. Really? A VH VHS copy of whatever. So here's the deal. The general rule is just don't write anything out anymore. Yep. Just, you know, run a dumpster um, and, you know, just don't let any of it perish and you'll well, be v fine. VHS is the world's first NFT. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good line, Lou. I like that. All right, so how are we giving away this Clemente card? Uh, so the Clemente is going to be first place in um, Layton's Loft giveaway today. There'll be six other prizes. There's going to be that, a $25 break credit, a 63 top set spot, and four band spots. And the team, whether it be Sam, J5, rest of the gang, they're going to give that away, Lou, uh, right after this at the end of our show. You can tune in on YouTube.com slash Vintage Breaks or, of course, on Facebook. Hang out, chill, and um, hopefully you're lucky enough to win one of these seven prizes and check out all the great stuff we have going on this afternoon on Vintage Breaks. Good crowd today. Everyone was uh, excited and having fun and they got involved with Ray and with us, and we appreciate it. Pulled off a trade. Another great show. Love the people who show up. Make sure you share us with a friend, and we'll see you next week, right? Yep. Special thanks to uh, Ray Schulte for joining us from the National. Um, extra special shout-out again to Chris Coe. It was really fun, uh, as always, uh, dealing with you and doing a deal and a trade you know, live on the show. And please, folks, if you haven't already – um, like and subscribe to Layton's Loft on Facebook, so that way you'll know each and every time I go live, which is Wednesdays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. See you next week. All right, I'm leaving the Reese here.